What I teach is something very special, mm -hmm. which is called the phenomenology or a phenomenology of the image. And that, the origin of that is music. Mm -hmm. Because I studied with uh, one of the greatest conductors of the 20th century, Sergio Celibidache. Okay. I studied with him for three years, phenomenology of music. And many things that I did intuitively before in photography, I became much more conscious. And then he inspired me to create a phenomenology of the image. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry for the lack of modesty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only person in the world who teaches that uh -huh. because I have created it. Yes. Well, that's something to be proud of, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, but I haven't finished the, the book yet. Okay. I'm, I'm working on it. Okay. And then the main thing is uh, for people to be conscious of certain things and then forget about them. But without this consciousness, you won't get too far. So the first what I teach is that there, the first thing I teach is that there are no rules. There are only principles. Mm -hmm. And the principles are very broad. And you can apply them in your own way, in your, in your own individual, personal way. But there are no rules. Okay. Now the first thing is that an image is made up of elements and the relationship between these elements. Everything in life is relations. Everything. Physics, mathematics, astronomy, biology, engineering, personal relations, working relations, everything is relations. Yeah. Now, if you don't see that in an image, if you don't see how the elements are related, and if you don't become sensitive to it, because you have to, it's a process of evolution, yeah. It takes me several years to become sensitive to the different types of relationships between the elements of an image. Mm -hmm. But if you are not conscious of that, you won't get too far. Okay, that's an interesting way to look at it. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you, everything you say makes sense to me, because um, I always feel like, uh, also in our school, that they teach us techniques and um, mm -hmm. they push us like, in, this, in a certain box and tell us that we should stay there to um, to get good grades. And, and that becomes a cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it takes the, the creativeness and the fun out of out of. Because first, first of all, there are no authorities. Okay. There, that, you know, a 100% authority doesn't exist in this world. Mm -hmm. Never. People who, are, who really know what they are doing may be an authority of 70%. But 30% they make mistakes. And thanks to that, the world goes forward. Mm -hmm. Because of the mistakes? Because of the mistakes they make or the things that they haven't uh, realized. Okay. And that's where we can come in. Mm -hmm. If we have a teacher or a lecturer, I never consider that person as an authority. With all my respect to Celibidake, there are certain things that I disagree with him. Mm -hmm. I also have been very influenced by a, call it a philosopher or a teacher, Jiddu Krishnamurti, I don't know if you have heard of no. him. Well, is it? But also I don't agree 100% with mm -hmm. what he says. I always try to find out uh, if there is room for a different interpretation or if there is a room for a different search. Yeah. So, to me there are no authorities. Interesting. <laughs> no, absolutely no. That's one of the things I, I don't like to learn from other people. I usually learn by myself. Yeah, and from but, your own mistakes, right? Uh, no, uh, it's not, not only learning from mistakes, but learning from your own experience. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing that counts is your experience. If you see that so much, something doesn't work, okay, it's a mistake, it's a false hypothesis, mm -hmm. then you have to find out something else. Yeah. But then we go back to uh, three things that make, a, make an image. Form, content, and content is, well, the third one is related to content, which is relationships. Mm -hmm. Now you will ask about form. Form is composition. Yeah. Now, why do we compose? Why do we uh, search a certain composition in an image? Why do you, what do you think? Um, because it's appealing to the eye, because it makes you feel something. But why? 
but why? Because some things just work. I don't know. I um, when I take pictures, I just go with a feeling, like you said, and I'm I'm probably not conscious enough as of why I make those decisions. I just I look and I see something and I think this works. Composition is putting things in order. Why do we search order? Because around us is chaos. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're looking at chaos in every day, in almost every aspect of our life. Now, if you put in an image chaos, who's going to look at that? If you see it every day. Probably no one. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be attracted by order, because yeah. this is what we search inside. Yeah. We always search order, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't achieve it, but at least we, we search it. Right. So that composition is order. And we want to put things in order so that they will be attractive to other people. Now, how do we compose? Well, what you, as, as you said, by feeling, not by rules. Yeah. Now, why cannot there be rules? Because if I approach a subject that I want to photograph and I think of rules, then I create a distance to that subject. Mm -hmm. I'm imposing an intellectual structure which has nothing to do with the subject, but it's all in my imagination. Yeah. So I really, I don't see anymore. I, I see what I think I see, but not what I see. Mm -hmm. The mind can be deceiving. <laughs> it is deceiving yeah. most of the time, and I have to get rid of that. Yeah. So composition is putting things in order, but uh, not intellectually, mm. but mainly emotionally. emotionally yeah. Now, what about content? What, is, what, what, do we, what should we search in the content of images or anything that we do in our lives? Um, I always look for the beauty. <laughs> and beauty can be many things. It can also be, um, uh, you know, spon spontaneousness and mm -hmm. uh, something out of the ordinary that you might see in your daily uh, surroundings. You see something that's not supposed to be there, but it's beautiful and you take a picture. Okay, now is there something behind beauty? If you go deeper, um, what moves you even more than beauty? Love. <laughs> yes, but love is something also which is part of something which is more general. Mm -hmm. It's a really hard question. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, it all comes down to emotions. And is something is there something beyond emotions? I'm thinking really hard. <laughs> Can you see my thinking face? Yes. <laughs> um, Something beyond emotions. Well, there are two questions I asked you. Mm -hmm. What is beyond beauty and what is beyond emotions? Mm 